Okay, so today I'm going to do a reading on Erica, Mina, and Safari. <laughs> I actually been wanting to do this for a minute because a long time ago, like before she had his baby, um, I had that fake ass Scorpio friend and I know that you watch me. What's up? Hey, how you doing? And shit like that. You're just a fraudulent ass motherfucker. That's why we ain't cool today. But, you know, I've been nostalgic, especially in Scorpio season. I was really nostalgic of you. You know, I thought about our childhood and everything and how you always been a fake ass motherfucker. But, you know, I cared for you all those years, even though you didn't give a fuck about me. But I cared about you a lot. And, um, yeah, but I remember that when they first started dating you were saying that you like them together like you think that they're a cute couple and stuff and I said that well I think that safari is what word did I use a clown I think I think I said that he was a clown or a goofy ass motherfucker something like that and I think that she gonna find that out and you know he basically thought I was a hater you know what's new what's new what's new anyway so he thought I was a hater but I bet you remember that shit because I be having visuals of you remembering this shit like this shit come up on your mind so you probably been waiting for this reading with your bitch ass anyways let's go oh okay I'm gonna start with these First, we're going to get into their personality. Okay, so let's talk about this for, like, the story. So, yeah, um, they both from reality TV, but Safari, back in the day, used to date Nicki Minaj. I don't know. If I have the energy at the end, um, I might tap into that or maybe do a separate reading. Probably do something separate, but... Yeah, so um, now I was watching, I think her name is Paris Milan or something like that. I'm not sure. No, 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 no. It was um, I am Elohim or something. Maybe not Elohim. I don't know. It's something like that, but. Um, it's this girl, she kind of popular on YouTube and she tell about these stories and stuff. And she really, uh, an advocate for black women. Like she really into the, the black woman movement and stuff. And, um, yeah, but she was making a point that people were saying that this is Erica Mina, uh, karma. And I don't know, I instantly got a vibe, like, I feel like anybody who thinking that, that's toxic for you to think that, okay? I'm going to say that for one, because people saying that Erica Mina, she did people wrong in the past and stuff like that, you know, really, who hasn't? And I feel like it take away some of the accountability from Safari, because even though like Erica could have been toxic to somebody else in the past, when she was in a relationship with him, this what the lady was showing in her video that she was always upfront with him. He bred from her. He made her believe in a fairy tale. And he was a narc and he sucked her dry. And now she looking really bad. Like she looked real bad. But you know what? Um, I could tell that she didn't really, she didn't have no real self-love because she let him suck him dry to that point because there had to be red flags. You know, I really felt like, I feel like Safari get a lot of pussy off the fact that he dated Nicki Minaj alone. Like the whole reason why he even owned love and hip hop is because he dated Nicki Minaj, but it must be some type of NDA because he never mentioned Nicki. 
<laughs> Yo, the person that make you famous, you can't even talk about that relationship. And I know that eats him up because I guarantee you he want to talk about it. Or maybe he don't because I feel like Nikki, she would have some shit to say that he ain't going to like. Be that as it may, um, I stopped watching Love and Hip Hop a while ago. Um, so now I only like maybe see like a few clips if they on YouTube or something. But I, I can't stomach like watching like a whole season. Like it's played out at this point. Um, it's a game. It's a game. And I'm not really into sports like that. But usually when it comes to reality TV show, the first season is usually the best season because you could tell that people is caught off guard. So you catching real emotion. Um, you catching real revelations. Like you catching people off guard, but by the time it get to the second, third season, people is on game. So now you just watching a whole bunch of people be fake as fuck, but they trying to make it look real. And that's why I don't like reality TV because it's really acting. But um, people use utilize it to make them look a certain type of way because if they could get people to like them um they could make money off of that they could get a whole bunch of followers then they could get a whole bunch of sponsors and yada 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 but it's real strategic because you ain't gonna get people to like you with reality tv with just being like nice all the time like you really have to be brutal like let's the whole sport reality TV is who could throw the best shade. That's one of the rules. Like if somebody come for you, you have to come back in a way that you really shut this person down. So it's a an attack of the solar plexus. You know how you punch somebody in a solar plexus and it knocks the wind out of them? That's what they're going for when they are attacking each other. Like, if you could get the other person to feel like shit or to look bad or put a blemish on them or to get them out of character, then you win. And I do feel like that breed, like, a toxic culture because after reality TV became prominent, that's how people started to interact with each other all the time because it's not reality. Like reality, reality TV has never been like fully reality, but they market it like that. And um, so people started to compare themselves to this. And, you know, we don't live lives like that. Like, I know I don't. Like, for one, if I don't fuck with you, I'm not going to be around you. I'm not going to come and to your party just to show out or to make you feel bad or to start some drama. Like, we don't do this in real life, but people started to emulate that. So then we got into a culture that all people do is throw shade. All people do is smile in your face and be fake and stab you in the back. That's all people do. So it's like ridiculous. So, but I do like to watch it sometimes because especially the first season, um, just because I could practice reading like, if I'm watching it, I can really pick up on what's really going on behind the scenes. Like, oh, okay, she really cheating on her husband. But in the show, they seem like the happiest couple ever. Like, they seem like 
they just so well put together. And then by the time they get to season three, they're getting a divorce because of what I said in season one. So I like it for that reason. It's kind of like practice and everything. But all right, let's get into it. Let's start with Erica Mina. What type of person is Erica? Who is she at the core? Who is Erica at the core? She really not that bad of a person like people like they saying that this is her karma and usually people is talking about how she treated like sin. Uh, I don't remember that too well, but I do remember watching that season because, you know, I was attracted to them. <laughs> uh, to sin and Erica together, I thought that was kind of hot. So I did watch that season. Um. And I, I used to think that sin was really cute. So anyways, but yeah, but I can't really recall why people hate Erica so much because of that, because I, I felt like they both was toxic and I felt like they really didn't love each other. It was, it was obvious to me when I was looking at it, like, Oh, they just together for the TV show, pretty much. So I knew that. But I ain't never really looked at Erica like she was a bad person. I just, I felt like she was playing a role. Like, and I felt like people would pick at her sometimes. So, you know, she would pop off and then people would like how she pop off and everything. And that kind of became like her persona and she just had to wear that but I don't like who she really is is she not that bad of a person um I don't know if she came from like poverty or something like that I kind of feel like she came from not having like a lot of money and she have like a a hustler mentality that you know she gonna get it However she can. Came out reverse. Dependence on others to the exclusion of effort. I do think that she can be selfish. It's some type of mentality. Um, I felt like for a long time, she kind of just leaned on her looks. Like... In relationships, she felt like she was deserving of like treating like a goddess, like a queen, just because she looked good. And that that don't work out. That didn't work out for her. But I feel like it not working out for her really shocked her. It really shattered an illusion that needed to be shattered. Because, you know, as a Scorpio, she needs to dig deeper. Um, so, because I just feel like a, a really, a shock around. And you know what? It's also around him being a black man. Because um, she used to black man fetishizing, fetishizing her. She used to that. So... She really didn't think that Safari was going to treat her like that. Even though she might have seen him treat other people disrespectfully, she didn't think that. She thought that he was just so obsessed with the way that she looked that she wasn't going to get that type of treatment. Mm. I don't know. I might have spoke too soon. She might be a shitty ass person. Like, I, I don't I'm going to let it play out. 
Yeah. Spoke too soon. I be too compassionate sometimes, y'all. So excuse me. Thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information, betraying confidence. Yeah, um, she got in a lot of positions by tearing other people down from gossip. All right, y'all might be right. Y'all might be right that she really is getting her karma. Oh, I looked over and see Attic. She on drugs. Um, She on drugs to the point that she really do need rehab. She fucked up. Yeah, it's starting to get real bad. Um, it's starting to get real bad. Uh, to the point that she could like overdose or accidentally overdose or something like that. Like it's real bad. Mm. And then after that came out this Don Juan card. So I feel like also her like doing drugs and stuff, it could make her like hyper sexual. And I do think that I do feel like she been through quite a bit of sexual abuse. But when it's come to the industry, that's very common. Like the likelihood of come across a woman in that industry that hasn't been sexually abused is very low. Very, very, very low. Because for you to get into certain positions, they put you through certain traumas in order to get to that position. So, um, she has something attached to her, like a, a sex demon or something like that, that when she drink, when she get high, she want to fuck. And it's real bad. It's real bad. And you know what? So far, he know about it. And I think that's why he have like a a lack of respect for her. Mm. Next card came out servant using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with your life. So yeah, I do feel like Erica, she could have came from a background that she didn't have a whole lot of money. And she had a mentality that, you know, she going to be a hustler. She going to get it however she can. And she kind of like destroy herself in the process. I don't think that she always was like that, though. Erica wasn't always like this. I'm getting this with the angel card. Um, I think it was a trauma that actually um, turned her into a very bitter person. Yeah, I believe something happened. Let's see. What happened? Yeah, I think this is actually like the double card in the deck. But I'm not, oh, or this could be Duff. She was initiated. Like she was, um, chosen specifically 
for certain reasons. And I think that she might not even be aware of why she was chosen. They made her think that it was something else. But I actually think it's something that has to tie into the occult. She was just like a good fit for whatever for whatever cause that they wanted to use her for. for. So, because whatever traumatic happened, I believe that it happened right before she was put onto like love and hip hop. But I don't know why. Like usually you on love and hip hop because you dated a rapper. So I don't know who the fuck she was dating. I don't know. But she was chosen. Like they pick her specifically because they knew that she was going to um, play the role that they wanted her to play. And I think it has to do with like her astrology, zodiac chart and all of that. Um, okay, I go ahead and use these. Um, the higher self deck. I'm just trying to figure out like, what was the trauma. And they did this trauma to her on purpose. And they knew that the trauma would activate a certain personality. I also feel like they attach something to her, some type of energy. I will surrender to things in my life I have no control over. I love myself to, to add more movement and exercise into my day. I know I, I'm going to use the trigger deck, whatever it is. But what I'm getting from these cards so far, like with that first one, um, something was put on her because if y'all would have seen Erica Mina, like before they push record on Love and Hip Hop and stuff like that, some people might even have called her like a sweetheart or something like that. Some people may have even said that about her, like she a real kind person, but they trigger her and traumatize her in a way that made her defenseless. They was able to, it's almost like um, them giving her like a, a drug or something introducing her to drugs so that they can have more control over her like they would do with trafficking people exactly like that like what they do in like sex trafficking that was done to her by the industry before they put her on camera So I think they might have introduced her to drugs. Uh, what was the the trauma? When I can't keep up in a conversation, I began to act arrogantly and rude. They knew this about her. And I feel like it's like astrological. Like they knew like this is a trigger. So they put her through some type of trauma that made this um, flare up. When I don't feel good about myself, I become needy and clingy, clingy towards others. So I also feel like um, they literally set her up with somebody. Um, they put her into some type of relationship. And in that relationship, she was turned out. Like in that relationship, she was put on drugs. The person was the person successfully attached sex demons to her. Um, 
the person was successfully able to make her feel insecure about very specific things because they wanted to mentally fuck her and train her so that all they have to do like before behind the scenes they just got to push certain buttons on her to make her respond to make her react to make her when I can't keep up in a conversation, I begin to act arrogantly and rude. So yeah, they they made her into this character. Like, I mean, it was always there, you know, it's a part of her. But they just aggravated it, brought it to the surface, and they also made her insecure and not believe in herself so that she won't deal with it in a healthy way. she be toxic. They wanted her to be toxic. So, you know, when you watch reality TV, you really are looking at people that are traffic. You know, it's the truth, though. You looking at slaves, people that are slave to the industry. That's what you're looking at. Um. The athlete car came out. Um, with this car, um, they was also attracted to the way that she looked. But you know, it's very like specific. Like, um, I'm seeing her face on a computer screen, and it's like they measuring her face. Like, I'm seeing numbers and lines and stuff like that. Like, um, they measuring her face symmetry. And that's another reason why they chose her. Because, like, they know what you are attracted to because they have programmed you to be attracted to that. So they was just going through people and then they measure the face and be like, okay, she a good fit. Like we could, we know that at least a certain amount of people would be attracted to her. So she a good fit because look at her face numbers. <laughs> like they got face numbers, like, I don't know. So mentor and teacher came out together. I kind of, I want to get clarity on that. Clarity on the mentor and teacher. Clarity on that. Um. Okay, what I'm getting from this is that um, they did hook her up with a lover, right? To kind of like break her in, but that wasn't it. I feel like there might have been a time that um, 
Erica really wanted to get help. Like she wanted to heal. Those, she wanted to heal. And they suggested people to her. And these people just further program her for their liking, for their purpose. So it did more harm than good when it comes to her soul. Um, but I feel like it released like some mental pressure. So she did feel relieved from it. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, because she was. I'm feeling like before Safari, she was already on the brink. She was already on the verge of losing control at one point, And she was seeking help. So, okay, so chronic emotional restlessness is manifesting itself in casual love affairs. Your heart is heavy and empty. You lose the will to strive. New goals and projects are needed. So, yeah, um, I'm feeling like she was suicidal at one point. And... It was getting really bad. So they sent somebody in. They sent somebody in, like a mentor or a teacher. I'm hearing that this could have been on the TV show or something. I haven't seen it. Like, I haven't seen her with somebody, but I'm hearing that it could have played out on TV. Um. Yeah, and this is relevant for some reason. Then the last card came out is the seeker, thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are. So I feel like this is sport this is a deeper card. Like this is pointing at her her spiritual journey because um Hmm. I'm actually feeling like Erica is a spiritual person. Like, I'm feeling that. Like, there's something about her that I do like. Um, I think it's something about her is quiet, but it's spiritual. Like, real spiritual, not religious and stuff like that, but Sometimes she could really tap in to something deeper. Um, she just can't maintain, she can't maintain that place. She real, that's why she's so broken actually, because she do have a big heart. I'm feeling that like she, um, she really want love and I feel like she been deprived of love but she really want that like she wants somebody to love on her correctly she in a real bad space right now she feeling like her life is over like she don't like to look in a mirror she in a real real bad space right now And I don't really think she have anyone, like anyone that she could really trust, like people that family members and stuff. She feel like she feel used by them. She feel like people don't really like care about her for real, for real. She also, she could be like obsessed with what people are saying about her. And the fact that people are saying that this is her karma is really fucking with her. Like to the point that she really don't want to live no more. Um, 
people do need to be more compassionate. Like people are so quick to judge motherfuckers on TV, but they don't hold themselves to that same standard. Like they will turn around and be like, oh, this is her karma. But when you look into their lives, they don't did some of the same shit that she did. But they don't look at themselves like that, you know? And, you know, the reason why Erica is so fucked up is because, you know, she cares. She cares about what people think about her. She cares what they say. And she's trying to play a role that she don't care, like she don't give a fuck, but she really, really do give a fuck. And it's really messing with her, like it's putting her in a really, really dark space. Mm. A real, real dark space. Um, if somebody do care about her, somebody needs to go and get her and like really be there for her because, um, I don't know, her will to live is really, really low. I do think that it's her kids that is keeping her a little bit grounded, but sometimes they are a trigger and sometimes her kids alone push her into an even darker space. I'm also, people are talking about it. People are whispering about it. People are talking like, Yo, Erica really need help. Like, she might not survive if she don't get treatment, counseling, or something like that. People are talking about it. Like, behind the scenes, like, maybe the other members. Because it's something that they see in Erica that make them feel like she doesn't belong. Like, she's not built for reality TV, for real, for real. Because um, some of the people, they can handle reality TV because they understand it at a deeper level. There are things that Erica is very ignorant to. Like, she don't want to see, like, the manipulation. Like, she don't really want to see the game. But that would actually help to free her. All right. So, What type of person is Safari? What type of person is Safari? <clears throat> I think he is Sagittarius and she is Scorpio. So relying on luck rather than hard work. Safari is like a man child all the way through to the bone. Like, he actually very lazy. He don't like to work. Um, if he wasn't doing this, he'd probably be a sugar baby to some rich woman. I'm going to go ahead and say it because I was also hearing rich men as well, like, If dad will put some money in his pocket, he would do it. So far, we don't got no soul. Oh, mm -mm. He don't got no soul. I'm really feeling that strongly. 
like he ain't just pretending like he don't give a fuck he really don't give a fuck he void so he don't got no soul Mm-hmm. came out in shadow using humor to wound rather than liberate the now of the emotional truth Actually, Safari is something different. Um, he likes something different. Um, he don't got no soul. Like he really giving me like robot, like a real robot. Like shit, if you cut into him, you might just find metal. <laughs> Ooh, um, damn. Mm, something happened. I think he could have been like switch at birth. Because I feel like his mom is not aware. Um, but Safari is something else. He was created in a lab. And he don't have a soul. I keep hearing that. Like he don't have a soul. And I'm seeing him do weird things. I think that he just a pawn that they use. That's why he was with Nikki for so long. And I think that the reason why that relationship lasted so long, because it was very strategic. Like, he traumatized Nikki in a very strategic way, but he was giving orders. So I believe that he was a Nikki handler for a minute until she like broke away from him all right but she he was used to spy on her yeah the mediator card came out and i believe that you see how mm. and you know he trained in a different way like it's almost like he's some type of experiment or something because he is not like real in a whole different way like they didn't even have to because I feel like his mom is like unaware like she had a baby and then at birth the baby was switch and then they gave her a safari and I think like all through his childhood he was like weird but he will always get like these random like opportunities like at school and stuff like that like if you was to talk to his family even their family would think that safari life is just weird. They might even feel like he was like extremely lucky, but they question it sometimes. I feel like his family, they feel the void when they're around him. Like they still try to love him and everything, but they feel like sometimes they be feeling like he not human. I think that they kind of like throw it off like, well, that just must be like that celebrity shit. It's because he was around those Hollywood people. But no, nah. if they go back before he was even famous, he was always void. And the mediator card came out because what I was getting from this card is like cold words. Like when he first got with Nikki, the way that he presented himself is that 
he was everything that she could ever want it. Like he treated her like he gave her everything that she wanted, but it was like pretend. It was on the surface. But he will also like he will pull her in, treat her good, get her attached, and then he would cheat on her. But it was very strategic. And I, I feel like he is controlled by um I want to say radiation, but it's something that it's a signal that they put off to make him to control him. And he could become anything that they want him to. Like, if they want to make him hypersexual, they will. If they want to make him into somebody extremely faithful, like, even Nikki would talk about him, like, one minute, he would be, like, a dream come true. And then, like, the next minute, he'd be somebody completely different. And... Like, I don't, it was, it was weird. Like anybody who ever been with him would say that it was weird. Mm. Um, He programmed to be very materialistic. He programmed to do anything for money. Pursues pleasure to the detriment of health, indulges at the expense of others. Okay, I'm starting to see ritual with blood, like just him in a dark room. The room is very dark. I cannot see nothing around him. He doesn't have on a shirt and he have on black pants and he have blood all over his chest. He breathing hard. Like he just got done screaming. Uh, he seemed to be very. um Taking over. I'm, I'm feeling like he being possessed by some type of deity at this moment that I'm seeing. Because he in a room, and I can't see the people, but I could feel them. They in the dark. But he got blood on him. I think he was made to take somebody else out. Like fight to the death or something like that. Ever so often, he has to give, he have to give sacrifices ever so often. It's brutal too. It's weird. Like, he will go places, but he will hear the calling in his head. Like, nobody call his phone or text him or anything to set up an appointment for him to show up at this place. It's like he could just be like at a restaurant in the middle of a date. And then all of a sudden he get like this signal in his head and he'd be like, oh, okay, I have to be at this place tomorrow. And then he would go to this place and they would play out rituals with him. But it's something that they put in him and he has to feed it with violence. Uh, I'm getting a visual of a movie Midsummer. 
bad movie. Yeah. He was never normal. Um, he never had a soul. He never had a soul. Something else occupies him, like some type of spirit um, that was placed into his body. Playing a victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. Like, that's how they utilize him. Like, I'm telling you, like, they can make him do whatever they want. All they have to do is send out a signal and he will, like, turn into that. Uh, they use him to also to channel a certain type of energy deity or something, but they, they use him to talk to it. That's why they make him come to places and they make this deity channel through him. Mm-mm-mm. And he's a really good actor, but it's because of what's, um, he was trained to be like an actor, but it's not really training. It was something that was placed in him. So he could take on any role that they need. If they wanted to make him stand in a corner like just completely staring at the wall for days on end they could do that i'm also feeling like there's people that see how malfunction it's really giving me the tiffany haddish vibe um y'all should go check out that reading Using talent as an excuse to mistreat others, posing as the starving, starving artist to elicit pity. Um, yeah, this reminded me of that time that they were saying that Safari was writing Nicki Minaj rhymes. They always had that as a possible plan. To take down Nikki, though, they always had that in their arsenal. And I don't believe it. I don't believe that. I believe she wrote her own music, but I also, because um, to Nikki, I feel like she's surprised that Safari even started rapping. Like when he started rapping, he started rapping like after her, I believe. That's what I'm picking up on. Um, and she was surprised that he even knew how to rap, that he just started. It's like he learned it overnight or something. It's because they program it in him. And what they was trying to do is to get him to rap like Nikki, just so they could use this story. They could use this story like, he was the one who is the reason for her fame, but it was a, a tactic to fuck with Nikki. Because I don't think that he, he rap anymore. Like, that because they don't want him for that anymore. They want him to play this reality TV character. Um, it's something about that that is tied into Nikki too. Um, I think it's something that 
initially it was kind of used to control Nikki emotionally because I felt like in the beginning she was concerned about him doing the show because she didn't want him to start talking about like their relationship or whatever and they knew that they knew that they knew that she was going to feel like that that's why they did it like I'm thinking that it could have been actually hmm, the record company or something Awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children. Opens the learning path of forgiveness. Um, clarity on that one. See, whatever they place into him is something that is trained. Like, it's been around for lifetimes, but it's not like, it's like a spirit. Um, It's not like a soul or something like that. It's like some type of spirit that been doing this for lifetimes. Like, um... I feel like this is a spirit that never like ascended or anything like that. It could have even been like created, I'm hearing. Um, but it just wanders around until they want to use it. And then they take this spirit and put it into a vessel. Oh. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that they take this spirit and put it into a dead vessel. So whatever baby that they swap out, they um the baby that they used wasn't alive. And then they put that spirit in it. Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm seeing a laboratory with these babies and like tubes, but they're not, not alive. Like they grow these babies, but it doesn't have like a heartbeat until they place the spirit in it. Ooh. And see, they have to do this at childbirth because I guess this is similar to like cloning. Um. Because imagine like if they was to clone you tomorrow and put you around your family, your family is going to notice like immediately. It's going to cause all types of red flags and stuff like that. But if you put it into a newborn child, you might think that this child is weird, but you ain't going to really question it like that. So that's why they do it like that when they want to do this. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle the cards and then I'm going to get into their relationship. I'm going to pause it and shuffle it. All right, y'all, I had to take a short break. Short break. All right, so we're going to get into their relationship dynamic. I'm also going to look 
like into their sex life just because of the sex demons and everything that is going on. See what come up, come up in that. But I'm being led to actually use this deck, which I barely use this deck. This is um something Martian. I don't know. I don't remember the name. I think it's got Martian in the name. And tell me about the dynamic of the relationship. Mm, I like how these shuffle. These are some quality cards, you know. Mm, I see some people like, I would see like, usually the people who do like the card flip videos, they would talk about the card stock and all of that shit and everything like that. And they be really big on that, like good card, card <laughs> quality. But I really don't be noticing that because all I really care about is the images and the message. But I could, I could tell there's some good quality. And the weight of the card make it really nice to shuffle. So yeah. Uh, tell me about this relationship dynamic. With this markable coming out, it's really giving me possession vibes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like confirming what I was saying. Don't, don't, don't. Look at these motherfuckers. I can't stand y'all motherfuckers. Okay, so you remember when I was saying that they grow these motherfuckers in a laboratory? So I think that they literally possess, this is how they um, put the Dracons into the bodies. Because, you know, I think that, you know, when they talk about aliens and from different star systems and stuff like that, um... Like, I feel like majority of us is aliens and stuff like that. And then Dracons are like a specific species, right? But I feel like, you know, these human bodies are, are space suits. But I feel like different species, aliens and stuff like that, they enter the body through different means, different methods. Like some of them can enter the body through like a spiritual birth or something like that. But the Dracons, they have to be like implanted. They have to like possess a body. And I feel like it's a body that is not inhabited. So the body can't um, have a living spirit in it for them to inhabit it. Yeah, because that was, I'm getting this from this Merkaba. Like they do some type of ritual in order to have their draconian spirits go into these bodies. See, it's telling you exactly, like, let me show y'all the cars together. They telling you exactly what I was just telling you. This is the process. This is the process. 
you know, and I came across this because, you know, um, I do energy healing and I came across someone with a really unique aura and I was hearing that they was a crystal being. So um, I feel like majority of us is like aliens, different star system, maybe even all of us, like I'm still downloading that like that information or whatever but you know from what I'm understanding is that like let's say that you consider yourself like a, a palladian or something like that you from that star system um it's not that the way that they got us believing about the universe and stuff is not real like um it's more of a dimensional thing or something like that like the way that they teach you about it is not real so you your spirit your soul group and stuff like that is relevant because like you could be a palladian or a gray alien or something like that or a dracon or something like that and we all come down here to have like some type of experience, play out some type of role, do some type of mission. But the human body is just like our space suits. And the way that you could uh, tell the difference of who is who is through the spiritual realm. You have to tap into that. You have to start seeing things through your mind eye to be able to actually see it. Okay. I'm going to go to a, a different deck. All right, so tell me about their relationship. Um, there's something that was inside of Erica that they did want. They did want to drain her. Like they, that was the whole point of even putting them in a relationship together. Cause I think that he's a motherfucker Dracon. And I think these Dracons are like vampiric. Like they have to feed on your energy in some type of way. Like they need a, a source of energy. And I feel like it's to like, in order to like sustain or something like that. Um. So, mm. that's why they put them together. Cause they did. They wanted to drain her energy. Um. They also wanted to further mind fuck her. They also wanted to prevent her from a spiritual awakening because I do feel like Erica have that. Uh, she has something in her that she can a spiritual she can spiritually awaken. 
and they wanted to prevent that so that's why they put them together so oh and then also recognition and reward came out because um uh, safari as a dracon he really just wanted like an opportunity to level up so that's what he using her for, but he really don't care about her. He really just wanted to drain her energy while he wait, because he waiting to be, um, he's waiting it to be put in a certain position. It was even worse than you think. Like whatever you seen on TV. And it probably was pretty bad on TV, but behind the scene, like I'm seeing her on the floor. Like he was pretty cruel to her, but you know, it was to drain her energy. And However, the ending is, um, he feel very, like, um, Safari feel proud of himself. He feel proud, he feel pride for what he was able to do to Erica. See, uh, when, wisdom and balance came out reverse. Um, the reason is, is because the Dracons, they celebrate any time that they um, interrupt somebody's spiritual awakening. Any time that they could successfully do that, they get rewarded for that. They get rewarded for it. Like they could get money, materialism, but a lot of them is looking for a position and a position may not even be in this lifetime. They could be working towards a position that they won't be able to have until like a, the next lifetime. But right now they're trying to collect as many slaves as they can to keep them, to keep the slaves with them to keep people from ascending. So anytime that they could successfully do that, they celebrate. They celebrate and they don't care. Like they really, like when you dealing with these motherfuckers, like they don't ever feel remorseful they don't ever feel sorry for their actions. They feel like they're doing what's necessary because they feel like their way is the right way. So it's like they like, well, we just trying to keep our species afloat because I feel like they need souls. Like they need to drain souls in order to stay alive. Yeah, it's something about them draining life forces in order to, so that they be able to stay here. Because I feel like it's almost like if they didn't have that, if they didn't have any life force to drain, it's like they wouldn't be able to breathe here or something. It's like that. It's like going to Mars without a spacesuit. Like, they actually very dependent on energy draining. They very dependent on that. Okay, let's get a few more cards. Actually, let's use this deck.
Alright, tell me more about this. All right, so the first card that came out was Oshun in reverse. Um, the reason why I feel like Oshun, which is in Orisha, is reverse is because um, this to me is pointing out like some really ancient energies that they really focus on. Like we have a, a variety of souls here right now. We have some... Um, we have something that is new actually, but these souls are not like naive or young. These are ancient souls, but either we haven't encountered these souls in a very, 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 very long time. Um, but they're going to be something like right now. We have some very powerful souls down here, okay? Um, and that's what they focus on. So there are some souls, like they just on a spiritual journey. Um, they might be young souls that haven't had like a lot of lifetimes yet. They haven't really left a a mark on history as of yet and they trying to do that but see okay they like to get to those souls in order to get to the majors you know so it's like they go through the minor arcanas so that they could suppress the majors and what they would do is they will use these younger souls, get them all fucked up, get them to sign their life away, get them to submit to them, get them to worship them, get them to trap themselves in this system. And they will utilize the beings with souls in order to, man to manipulate the major arcanas. In order to suppress them. Because um, the thing is. Is that. The dracons. It's hard. Like. It's hard for them to come. Up to a major arcana. Like, let's say that you are reincarnated my act or something like that. Something, something, something. Um, Like, they really after to oppress you. Like, they really want to get to you. So, it's hard for them to come up to you because you're going to start to sense their void. Like, if Safari was to come around somebody like me, I'm going to instantly feel it. And it's going to be hard for him to get close to me as a motherfucking Dracon because they carry an energy. That's why a lot of times they like to deal with you from a distance. They don't like to get up close to you because I've been noticing like since 2020, people who like attack me, they will always avoid coming in my aura. They will always avoid getting too close to me. 
they will limit the contact that they have with me, even if it's like on the phone. But when it comes to like younger souls, they can't really recognize the energy. So they will utilize these young souls in order to attack the major arcanas. So that's like the grand scheme, you know, um, Erica, she do have a soul and she just got caught up, you know, um, it happens, it happens, it is what it is, hopefully in this lifetime, she can heal and move on from it and clear out the energy that is keeping her stuck. Uh, hopefully she get delivered from it. But see, they use the Dracons as kind of like handlers to these souls that they are trying to manipulate so that they can manipulate you. Because when they manipulate these souls, traumatize them, and then they put them on camera. They put these people on camera to be a role model to you. And that influenced the way that you perceive things. It influenced the way that you look at yourself. It influenced you. Because even if a person have a young soul, if they have a soul, period, they have a sense, they have a power about them. They have a magnetism about them. They have something about them that you're going to gravitate to. It's not the same with Dracons, you know. Like they kind of have to fabricate their magnetism because I feel like Dracons, they naturally have a repellent like energy. So they, that's why they have to, oh, okay, it's coming to me like clear as fuck. That's why they have to drain um, our energy so that they could wear it, so that they could continue to deceive us and be around us without freaking us out. They absorb our energy, act like us, mimic us. To manipulate us, to destroy us, to keep us oppressed, to keep us being a slave to them. And, you know, the Dracons, they have really, really, like, they look down. They look down on people with souls. They look at us like we weak. I mean, not anymore. It's changing now because they're getting fucked up. They knew this time was coming, though. They knew that this time was coming. They knew that ancient souls was coming around this time. And they knew that these ancient souls are going to wake up the masses. So they've been preparing for this. But they so ignorant. Like, they got lizard brains for real. Um, I'm hearing because they made up of like a material or something like that. Um, it's like they made up from like the dark matter of greed, hate, um, all the impurities. They are made up out of that. So that's all they could really do. But the reason why they was even programmed into existence is for spiritual practice. I know I went super deep. I was supposed to just be looking into this relationship, but I can't even help it at this point. So... This is the type of stuff y'all going to get from me because 
I can't even be shallow if I try. Like sometimes I be trying to stay on the surface, but I go straight to the the plot. All right, let's look into the um uh the sexual energy between them. Okay, so yeah, I'm about to wrap it up. The first card that came out is the Ace of Pentacles. It came out reverse, which makes sense because this whole relationship was based on opportunity. Um, I do feel like Erica, she was manipulated into this position, but for the Dracon Safari, um, he always knew that this was like a come up for him the next card that came out is a nine of wands but it came out reverse but when i was looking at this card i instantly heard daddy issues so um they was able to draw erica in and deceive her through her daddy issues they knew too is it was well planned out like safari before he go to his victims he studied them um he i believe he even downloaded characteristics of her dad in order to better deceive her and let's say that Erica don't even know who her who her dad is. She never met him before. Just because she carrying like the DNA, she's still going to be like attracted to that energy, drawn to it. Um, I don't know what's the situation between Erica and her dad, but I am feeling like most likely it's traumatic because they like to use traumatic situations to oppress you to trigger you i want to look it up lately um like batteries been draining like extremely fast around me Erica Mina and her dad Mm -hmm. look at this her father was a known drug dealer while her mother peddled drugs very often and ended up in jail several times this meant that her father had to take care of hold on Oh, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, I be know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, let me read it. 
Um, this meant that her father had to take care of her until she was five years old. During that period, he abused her. When her mother was released from prison, she cared for her. A large majority of Erica's childhood is unknown, as well as her education and academic achievements. Why is that? See, she probably was created too, some type of way. I do think that she have a soul, but I feel like you spiritually sign certain contracts to be in certain positions. It could be something that you did in a past life or something like that. Um, but they do train people to put them in certain positions, especially public positions. They want to train these people because they want to control the narrative. So that's why you will look into these celebrities' lives and a lot of their life is like a mystery. Um, like they just came up out of nowhere or something like that. It's because it ain't normal. <laughs> It ain't normal. Um, so yeah. And if Erica ever heal from this or recover, which honestly, um, I don't know, it seemed to be very hard for the celebrities to ascend. It's very hard from for them. Um like that was a time that I was rooting like for Orlando Brown, but I don't know. I, I kind of feel like he just way too traumatized because the last time I heard a interview of him, he seemed like he got worse. He was talking about religion. Mm -mm -mm. See, um, the amount of trauma that they put these people through is really, it make it really hard for them to recover, like really hard. So yeah, daddy issues, um, but they utilize that. They even install some of, I'm hearing DNA. They put something familiar in Safari to make him more attractive to Erica. Um, the Two of Swords is the only card that came up correctly. Um, I feel like and sexually, in a lot of ways, he actually demeaned Erica. But it slowly led up to that. Like he slowly start to demean her sexually. Um, like at first it was like real romantic and everything. But then he started to be like rough with her. Um, I'm hearing anal. So there's something about anal sex. It's a, something energetic about it that is not healthy um like with me I would not do anal sex like I would not let somebody put their penis in my butthole <laughs> I ain't gonna lie I tried it in the past I tried it but I hated it then I still hate it now well I haven't tried it recently but I don't know you know I feel like um, cause I've been sensing something and I feel like, actually, I ain't going to even manage, mention that, but I mentioned a little bit. I just feel like when you really comfortable with somebody and you really in love with them, um, you willing to explore cause you feel safe with that person and everything. But I would say that. Anal sex is something that 
I'm really not interested in. But I do know that, like, um, like I feel like if you apply pressure to the anal during like penetration or something like that, it could feel really good. So I feel like it's something around it that can provide like a form of pleasure. Um, but yeah, it's something energetic about it too. It's something ritualistic about it as well. So I feel like eventually he wanted to do things like that with Erica. Like demean her in like a sexual way. And she did it because she wanted to keep him. But it got to be like really brutal at times. Like she didn't like it. She didn't enjoy it. I think that she might have even started to avoid having sex with him because he became so. It wasn't just. It's the way that he would make her feel. He would demean her before, during, and after. And it was very strategic. And he did this purposely to harvest energy from her, to drain her of her life force. Last card, the sun, this came out reverse. And I just feel like he utilized um, sex as a means to break her eventually. All right, so I didn't even read. Oh, yes, I did. I just didn't finish them. Because I think I said everything I had to say. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now. Because I'm ready to get out of this energy. Stay blessed, y'all. And yeah.